one million dollars. Earning this automatically puts you in 1% of society. Now, how a guy in his 20s earned multi-million dollars? Let's see the ways to earn one million dollars. There are easy and there are hard ways to earn one million dollars. For example, you can be gifted one million dollars or inherited. That would be an easy way. You can sell $10 product 100,000 times or maybe a $100 product 10,000 times. That's hard and it takes a lot of your time. For $2 million you can repeat the process and that's a lot harder. So when you see a guy in his 20s showing off his multi-million dollars watch collection, what do you think? Fake? That is money? What if that is not the case? Or what if it is? Today we have three guys who earned multi-million dollars and they haven't even turned 25 yet. We will analyze each of these three young multi-millionaires and conclude are they a real thing or a thing called fake guru. Let's look at our first case, Sebastian Giorgio. So how much money do you make in a day? It's like 10, 11,000 per day, every single day. Seb is a young multimillionaire with amazing hair. Without a discussion, Seb has the best hair in the whole YouTube finance space. 10 out of 10. He is from Romania, his parents immigrated to Detroit. Later they divorced. As he says, kids looked at me weird. I didn't have cool shoes or couldn't eat because they didn't have money growing up. My mom couldn't afford the electricity bill. And like, I understood what was going on at the time, but since we didn't have electricity, I couldn't use the stove to cook food, you know, before school. So I actually lit up a candle and fried an egg on the candle, which took forever and it didn't really work out. And I think I ended up throwing it away anyway. Childhood gave him a huge reason to make as much money as he can. And young Seb made 200 IQ plan. And so I wanted to fit in and I wanted to be a normal person, a normal kid, like any kid does. He wanted to become a neurosurgeon because he saw that they make bags. So he needs to go to college to become a neurosurgeon. The plan was simple. So pay college, become a nurse, save up, pay off debt, med school, neurosurgeon. Simple, yet amazing plan. Seb got a job at Taco Bell with $8.25 an hour. Then he worked at a car wash because of tip money. And then he sold windshields. He also flipped cars, but how he made millions? Well, Seb was a smart high schooler. He earned 300 to 500 dollars per week. He was smart because he earned that much and invested it by buying a great investment, like a sports car, Infinity G35. Then he stumbled upon Graham Stefan and Graham likes to smash the like button. Graham smashed Seb's plan and then Seb wanted to become a real estate agent just like Graham is. Then he stumbled upon the magic business of dropshipping. And at the same time, Seb was a real estate agent, a dropshipper and a caretaker. He worked really hard. His dropshipping journey is really interesting. His first store flopped, but he made more and more stores and learned more and more about dropshipping. He decided to go full beast mode on dropshipping and after some money gained, he bought a GTR. That business didn't make him millions. This story is amazing and that wasn't even the best part. Now comes the best part. He fell in depression. He was done. His girlfriend of 5 years left him. But my man pulled himself out of depression. He got back to dropshipping, made stacks. He started a Google Ads agency, made racks, started flipping houses with his bro. And he still does that to this day, all these businesses. And currently is building a house that ain't cheap. The best thing is Seb documented all this journey on his YouTube channel. Let's go to our next case, Jordan Welsh. Jordan maybe doesn't have such a good hair as Seb does, but he's got an insane grip. Bro got an amazing fashion sense. And you will see why. He was raised in a small city in Florida and didn't have a lavish childhood. His mother worked really hard to provide for him and his sister. He spent his childhood like any normal kid. 
playing video games and watching and making YouTube videos. If you combine gaming and YouTube, one of the things you can get is editing Call of Duty montages, which Jordan did for his Call of Duty clan. That was actually his first payment, $20 per video. After that, Jordan started his own fashion brand called Retrospect where he sold clothes to family and friends and the clothes were produced by a local manufacturer. That business didn't go well, so Jordan decided to go on shoe flipping business. He did that for some times and decided to host a shoe convention in his city. Hosting a shoe convention is pretty impressive for a kid, even if it's a small one. But that was only the beginning. He also flipped items on Craigslist, worked as Craigslist tech support, worked as a busboy making $100 per night, did music videos for local rappers, and did dropshipping in college. And damn, that's a lot of stuff. Jordan, at a young age, got huge experience in business and money making. But from all that businesses and jobs, the big money came from dropshipping. In first year of college, Jordan borrowed money and made $72,000 in dropshipping. What did he do with that money? Well, he didn't do a smart decision to buy a sports car like Seb. He made an even better decision by moving to LA. <laughs> he also pursued his YouTube career. He's been doing YouTube for years. Right now, Jordan makes, I dare to say, one of the best financial content on YouTube. He also started this dropshipping course-like service. It's a service where you have everything you need for dropshipping, and I mean everything, from A to Z. Jordan also revealed his dropshipping winning product, which is rarely done by dropshippers. His journey is also documented on YouTube. Now let's go to the last case. Iman Gazi, a guy that buys Rolexes like candy. Now his story is amazing. He was born in Russia to an alcoholic and abusive father. His mother remarried and moved to London. So Iman lived in London with his mother and stepdad. Plot twist, his stepdad was wealthy. Iman went to private schools and felt the taste of wealth. So that must be it. He got a rich stepdad who gave him everything, right? No. His mother and stepdad split up and for some time Iman and his mother lived on welfare. That taste of wealth wasn't gone. Iman started grinding when he lived with his stepdad and just continued even more. He made YouTube videos about fitness and then he decided to start a social media marketing agency. And Iman found the place where he will dig gold. He got some clients on his business and also started talking about SMMA on YouTube. And if you didn't know, SMMA topic on YouTube brings big CPM. But CPM isn't the only thing that Iman got from YouTube. He also got leads for his business. It started as 1k a month, then 2k a month, then 10k a month, and so on. By 18, he was a millionaire, as he says. He also said that his mother was his biggest inspiration, which is nice, but I think that the key of Iman's success is in his turtlenecks. But those two aren't his only source of income. I mean, my man Iman has got a multi-million dollar watch collection. Iman saw that the market needs a learning platform for agency owners. So he decided to start his own learning platform where he sold courses. And he made bags with that. Now, Iman is the most controversial of the three. He had some, how should I say it, questionable business moves. He sold NFTs, a lot of courses, consulting for $25,000 that was for two days. That was a bargain. And the latest project, Digital Renaissance. Now that's the most controversial one. He made videos about how the puppet masters are controlling you and that you need to escape and beat the puppet masters. And he can sell you, <coughs> I mean, help you with that. Hmm. Of who does this remind me of? The Matrix, the real world, the real key to understanding finances. Can't remember. Now the videos were deleted and Iman said the puppet masters did it. But in reality, he did it by himself. Iman's journey from a broke teen to a rich teen is, you wouldn't believe, also documented on YouTube. 
Interesting cases, Seb, Iman and Jordan. They are ruthless capitalists. I mean, they could be evil and want world domination. But we can't know that. No, no, just kidding. From what's publicly known and what is shown on the internet, they are pretty good guys. They could still plot world domination behind the scenes. But are they good or not is not the question of the video. The question of the video is are they legit or not? And the answer is... Yes, they are. They are legit. I mean, their journey is documented on YouTube. You can find everything on their channels. And their sources of income can create multiple millions of dollars. You can say that they are lucky, but I wouldn't agree with that. I think that they sacrifice their teens to build high income skills. And they are grinding for years. I believe that if you strip them of every dollar they have, they could rebuild it in not a long period. You can see why they are getting hate. I mean, having this kind of success at this young age isn't possible. And whoever sells courses is a scammer. That's facts. After all, they all are nice guys. I have huge inspiration from them. As we said in the beginning, making $1 million is hard and it looks like a long road. If you are not gifted it, these guys get a huge success in a young age and they prove that age doesn't matter in getting rich. So if you're old or young, it doesn't matter. You can still do it.